Are you looking for a podcast about acres and acres of empty asphalt? Well, then you must be thinking of another podcast. And- Good evening, Kelsey. Good evening, Robert. As you can tell, I'm a little echoey. A little bit. I think I talked about it on one of the last shows, and then while we were doing our Animal Crossing thing, which I still can't get over. Uh, That was so much fun. It was so much fun. I've been thinking about it every day since. I know. Um, I literally moved over the weekend. Yeah. Everything so fast. (laughs) Okay, so, so I remember you talked on the podcast. So they had an apartment that was like below you on the other side of the building that you pay almost the same and you get a garage and you get a yard. So you were like, yes. yes, please sign me up. Yeah. When they told us that, though, they were like, OK, if you want it, you got to move like in two weeks. Yeah. Like you got to get. Go get. And I really did not want to do it because at the Poop Scoop place, right? Uh huh. It was Christmas week and New Year's week, back to back, where Friday was a holiday, so we were going to miss a day of work. Everybody knows the dogs poop more over Christmas and New Year's. Well, you still got to scoop that day, right? Yeah. So it was either everybody works on Saturday, so just like take that day off, just do that day on Saturday, right? Uh Uh-huh. Or, because everybody was throwing a fit... You do your Friday stuff throughout the week on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So, like, mix in some of these to these so you just have, like, longer days, right? Uh Uh-huh. And everybody chose that. So, I was, like, working double time, and now I got to pack and move. That's too much. Well, we did it. It's all packed and moved. And you survived? Yeah, but it has not been well. Taylor has been in a constant state of irritation. I going to see Taylor's been in a coma. I was like, oh no. I mean, kind of that too. <laughs> she like pulled a shoulder muscle or something. Oh fuck, that sucks. And uh, we just found a... Alright, Kelsey, are you ready for this? No, but go ahead. No, you are ready. Okay. It is a weighted heating and massage blanket. Oh my god, what? Yeah. I would die under there. Just pure pleasure. <laughs> Well, so melt away. It's like a tiny one, so it only fits like on your chest or like your back or something, you know. Boo. And it's and it's four pounds. It's not a lot. Ugh. Give but, it to me at sixty pounds, and then we'll talk. But it's like a weighted thing. So I put I put it on her shoulder, and I left her there a while ago, and uh, I haven't heard from her since then. So she may be in a <laughs> coma now. Okay. So we go to move on Saturday. They haven't even made our keys for the new place yet. What? Yeah. They literally didn't prepare for us to be moving. Oh my god. In any way. So uh, How are they going to tell you, like, you got to move right now and then not actually give you the ability? Um, we had a guy come in and he goes, oh, I can tell. They've not been in this place to clean at all. Oh my god. So our our new garage door goes straight into the kitchen. Okay. And you can tell it's got, like, drywall powder, like, boot prints all over that floor. Ugh. Right? That sucks. And the floor is, like, broken, and it's, like, peeling up what? from the laminate in a spot, right? Oh, my God. So that's all messed up. There's a spot in the closet where uh, the internet guy turns everything on and off. Yeah. That's just a hole in the wall. <laughs> And, like, we thought we were, like, done finding things. And Taylor was like, I'm ready to eat. And she goes to the microwave, and the handle just pulls off. (laughs) And she's like... Oh, that's so sad. I'm done. Okay, not the whole handle, but, like, the bottom part just, like, pulled off. So you have to open it from the top. That's enough of the handle to come off. But, like, everything is just fucking wrong. Everything is wrong. And then we packed so fast... Like, we can't find anything. Yeah. Like, I somehow, by the grace of whatever higher power there is, found... I found everything to this computer but the Yeti and my headset. Oh, my God. (laughs) And so, actually, I was going to get on with you 
and just pretend like I couldn't hear you and just be like, hey, you need to turn on your screen and I'm just going to read your lips and try to do the whole show. <laughs> God, can you imagine? I kind of want to make that a Patreon thing now where like we have no headset and we try to hold a conversation. Oh, that would be really fun. <laughs> <laughs> like I thought about that today. Can we do charades or just mouth? I mean, we we can do whatever we want. <laughs> oh my gosh, charades would be hilarious. That would be really fun. So, uh, future Patreon content, guys. <laughs> One of the biggest things is we bought... So, Taylor bought a fan. She bought, like, a really nice fan for the living room up there, right? Yeah. We had the maintenance people put it in, and it's our fan. So, we wanted it taken down and moved down here, right? Yeah. We have been here for Saturday, Sunday, Monday, today's Tuesday, four full days. It's still not here. Oh my god, you can do it in yourself by that amount of time. I know, but they're all weird about it, and I've yeah. never done that, so... I mean, ceiling I fans. could, I guess, but I don't want to. Yeah, ceiling fans are not hard to install, they just fucking suck. It's yeah. just arduous. So, I don't know. Everything's just, like, a thing. So... We just, we just don't know. Everything's, everything's what it is. <laughs> awesome. Well, at least you're mostly moved and at least you're able to record. <laughs> yeah. Um, we are redoing all kinds of stuff. We're going to do all kinds of like paneling for like podcast sound. Nice. Um, Taylor got me a new desk. Hell yeah. So there, there, there might be more space for stuff. Yes wonderful i'm finally gonna get the tv the way that i want it again which (laughs) also by the way guess what i found out what'd you find out i may have talked about it i've been in a quandary about the headset for the playstation 5 Uh uh-huh right yeah do i get the sony brand ones right or do i get this steel series brand one that right. is designed for it. And of course, I kind of want to do the Steel Series because we're not sponsored, but passionate. Exactly. Well, you know, their, uh, their uh, factory has been closed due to scheduled maintenance. Right. right. <laughs> and so you can't find them. The Sony ones came back in stock today, and I was like about to buy a set. And I was about like, you know to. what? There has to be a... We bought the biggest, baddest headset on the market. We did. I mean, we bought the big daddy. The big boy. I was like, that thing really can't work with it. It works with it. Oh my god. (laughs) There is a firmware update that I need to do for the little box that we have. And it enables it to do the 3D audio for the PlayStation 5. And then I can just do the thing with the bomb headset that I already own. Hell yes, you saved yourself like several hundred dollars. Yeah, I'm very happy. Good, good. But the PlayStation... I haven't looked... The PlayStation has been packed up for three weeks. Oh, man. <laughs> and it's probably not going to come out for like another week or two. Ah, uh, you've been without your, your new toy. Yeah. Uh, I just... I keep thinking like, if I just wait and then I can just like indulge in it once like everything's done and like I'm really relaxed in, into it, it's going to be all the better, you know? But, like, once, okay, so once you get everything, like, unpacked and you can finally relax, you're going to have a corporate job again, and then you're going to be, like, on that nine-to-five grind. Yeah, but I still have weekends. It's true, yeah. And I won't be tired of shit. Yeah, that's a bonus. Yeah, I won't have to be, like, scooping my life away (laughs) and then, uh, you know, be just, like, dog-tired. But the first thing I'm going to do when I go sit down to play, you know what I'm going to do? What are you going to do? I'm going to crack one open. Well, I was just about to. (laughs) Nice juicy crack. Okay. Speaking of that, I tried looking up the RTX voice stuff again. Uh Uh-huh. So that thing is called NVIDIA Broadcast, where it's supposed to have the, like, RTX voice built into it. Yeah. But it's like a streaming thing, and I don't think it would just cut out our voices for the podcast. What do you mean? that RTX thing is built into that program for while you're streaming. It's not just like oh, you're able so... to turn it on for your voice while we do this. Okay, I see. So you wouldn't be... So we, mm. Yeah, that complicates things. Yeah, and they have never updated the RTX voice thing from when we got it in April. 
oh, that's so frustrating. <laughs> like the when you go to like, capabilities. Yeah. When you go to the website, it still says like April 19th, 2020. Yeah. And I still okay. have the program and I want to use it all the time, but I don't trust it still because it no. would always robotify things. And it cut out your toad screams. I know. I'll never forget. <laughs> that's been me lately. Yeah. I think as far as like streaming goes, Discord does a good enough job of suppressing whatever stray noises arise because whenever you cracked your beverage just now, I didn't hear it. And I assume that when I cracked mine, you didn't hear it. I did this time, actually. Oh, you did? Yeah, okay. I did. Yeah, I, I was just hoping to be able to do RTX voice on this again because when we did, it was so great. It was so smooth. When it worked, it was so good. Yeah. But when it didn't, it was infuriating. You the know? technology is there. We just need it tweaked and coddled into a, a, a new animal. One, one day. day, all will align. <sighs> but so, what have you been up to? Hopefully not as stressful stuff as this. Well, a different kind of stress, I guess. So okay. I took, um, not last week, but the week before, off. Yes. For, my, well, not the whole... Okay, so I took christmas eve through my birthday off which was you know yeah two two days in one week and two days in another but um so we've been doing like a backyard renovation for the last couple of months just very slowly so we had that old decrepit greenhouse in our backyard that mm -hmm. at one point had the lathe in it and we remember yeah earlier on in this podcast i was going through my stuff and getting rid of things that did not spark joy uh, the lathe no longer sparked joy, so I donated it to a facility in the area where people can go and use it. Yeah. So it's getting used. It's getting love. Um, but we still had the decrepit greenhouse. And, like, it's it would have been a great place to have just for a workshop because it's a, it's a dry area, you know. But it's also 110 degrees in there at <laughs> all times. Yeah. So <laughs> it's impossible to do any work. Like, even with a window AC unit in there, it was too hot to function so uh we've been slowly like emptying out the greenhouse over the last couple of months like over the weekend we would just take a few hours and take stuff out and we were at the point where we were like cutting shelves out and over this like five days we actually tore the entire greenhouse down i completely. saw that picture yes i posted it on twitter it was an event and <laughs> It it took a long time, but I had my capable husband with me. We had our capable power tools. We It's like the of... opposite of raising a barn. Yeah, tearing down a greenhouse. Yeah. So it's down now, and we have been just kind of like moving the stuff that was inside the greenhouse around and making new spaces, I guess. So the patio, uh, we moved the workbench that was inside the greenhouse into the patio area, and we took this bar that we had installed in the patio like mm -hmm. like a little countertop like a laminate countertop that we never used except to like store junk yeah. on top of we, we took that down put the workbench in its place um i sanded down the workbench it's nice and smooth and i varnished it so it's nice and pretty it's just been a really busy couple of weeks but i feel like yeah. stuff is happening so yeah. for my birthday a thing that I have wanted for quite some time, because this is a tool that I used very, very often in school when I was doing my art degree. Okay. A miter saw. Okay. So it's one of those big chop saws, you know, that you can cut 45 yeah. degree angles with. Yeah. I went out and I bought myself a miter saw. Nice. Yes. I'm very excited because one, you can do home improvement projects with it. And two, you can create canvases with it because you have to like, you know, cut you know, mm. wood to make canvas. Yeah. And uh, I wasn't going to just sit there and hand saw it because it doesn't get you an even cut. So no. I got some birthday money. I spent it on a miter saw. I have an area to put the miter saw. Now I just have to actually get it set up and I can start building stuff. And the first thing I want to build for myself is some nice sound panels on these walls because I have these like foam sound panels. Yeah that have been up on the wall for the last two years that we've been doing this and they fall off like almost every day. They, they serve their purpose as far as sound absorption goes, but they don't aesthetically please me. So I'm going to build some like nice cushiony fun fabric go. panels, just stick them up on the wall. Okay. 
Yeah, when we were moving, we took those uh, little squares off the wall. Yeah. And the, like, tape things that they gave us when we put them up there. Uh Uh-huh. It was like ripping the foam. Yeah. Like, it was so stuck to it. (laughs) Because, like, mine were falling for about the first couple months, and then I really just, like, mashed them on there. Uh Uh-huh. And I guess it, like, fused to those little glue strips. That's what I've been doing. So did you use, like, command strips on yours? No, I bought some from the place that we got the foam. Okay. Like, it was, like, five bucks to get, like, 40 strips to be able to put all this up. That's nice. So it's like, okay, I'll just use theirs because I figure they know what it needs, you know? Yeah. But, uh, no, we hate it, and we bought some command stuff for when we do it again. Yeah, so I have the command strips, and they fall down, like, every Ugh. fucking day. So God. I don't know if that's your solution. Maybe I can build you some panels. Maybe. Cover it with, like tmnt fabric i will commission this yes yeah i, really I was telling to... taylor that i that uh you can just take those foam panels that we have now and put them behind picture frames so if you put a picture on the wall it still absorbs stuff a lot of people do that wait what so like the little foam panels we have uh-huh like if you have stuff hanging on the wall you can like put it behind it and it helps absorb the stuff still so like you hang the picture on top of the foam yeah Huh. Or, like, if you have, like, paintings, you know, the canvas has, like, space inside of it, you know? Yeah. A lot, like, a lot of people will just line the inside with the foam that they have, and now they have their art, but also a bunch of foam to absorb some stuff. Okay, interesting. Yeah, maybe I'll just save the foam and, like, stuff the panels that I want to make with it. See? There you go. Perfect. So, that's cool. I want to get weird with it and, like, make a ceiling, too, because I also have a corner desk. Oh, my God. Yeah. (laughs) And I, I, like, I feel like more noise can happen in the space above me because you know there's the corner and sound bounces around in that yeah and it's bare up there so have you ever just get, seen like, those other foam pieces are called bass traps yeah those big old boys that go in the corners do i love bass traps they They're look so, so cool. weird <laughs> i'm gonna look up some right now um, bass traps but yeah i feel like if i build just like a a triangular almost a shelf i guess it would be sort of cat trap because the cats would hang out up there but then they would be off of my keyboard and (laughs) i would get and their little furry bodies would just absorb all the sound yeah exactly i love that oh and so more with the uh the backyard we so the greenhouse is fucking out and gone and for my birthday i asked for a fire pit because i've always wanted a, a fire pit i fucking i love fire pits so much like the concept of roasting a marshmallow or like a hot dog it just makes me so happy because s'mores and hot dogs i love fire i love fire so much i do love fire but controlledly um but yeah so i've always wanted a fire pit um just to just to have a little weenie roast and we are taking another week off very shortly because it's our anniversary on the 18th. So we're taking that entire week off and we're going to build the fire pit in the backyard. Nice. And I'm so thrilled. I'm so you excited. Know, I saw you post something about a fire pit the other day. And after Christmas and New Year's, so many people have fire pits out in their backyards now. Really? It's like everybody was like, yeah, I should get one of those too. And then everybody got one. <laughs> I've seen it's, like 10 homes with brand new ones. It's the year of the fire pit, man. I guess so. I'm so excited. Then I told Taylor today, I was like, and also a lot of people have hammocks. Oh, we have a hammock too. <laughs> See, what, what is up with hammocks? We got a hammock do ever, for do you our ever anniversary. Lay in it? Well, so we got it. We got it for our, our wedding present, actually, for my sister and her husband. Um, okay. And it just like, we had it in the backyard and there's like no space in our backyard beyond the patio. And like the greenhouse was just there. So there's no like space for a hammock to be. Yeah. But with... Um, the greenhouse coming down we're going to have so much more room so we're going to have like the hammock for activities yes so much room for activities <laughs> we're going to set the hammock up next to the fireplace the okay. fire pit i mean okay i honestly don't know that, that i've ever been in a hammock hammocks are okay i think they're overrated but i mean if you like to lay outdoors in a piece of fabric that is for you <laughs> Taylor was saying that it was like the greatest thing ever says everybody who's ever been in one. I guess. I mean, tons of people have them. You have one. So it must be true. Yeah, I haven't. I have not used it in like the three years that we've had it. And I feel guilty about not using it. But but if it 
But if it weren't great, you would have gotten rid of it. It's true. So it must be great. It must be great. So, oh, also from all my time doing stuff, I wanted to bring your attention to some more radio ads real quick. This is probably the last time I'll be able to talk about these. Yeah, you're no longer going to have the radio to listen to. Yeah, no more radio. I have... I have some some thoughts about the radio again. Okay. So there's a new type of radio ad that's been going around that I completely despise. Okay. The new like formula for a radio ad is they will be like, here's what this product does. And it will give you like three examples of things that it does. And then they'll just play a sound effect of that example after they say it. Like an infomercial, but like only in audio form? Yeah. So it, it'll be like, you should get on Job Recruiter because, you know, whenever whenever you need a job because you lost yours, oh. <laughs> but now it's time to find a new one. Aww. They go, and then you <laughs> land the job you wanted. Yes! Okay. But like, but, but it's different voices or different sound effects after everything they do. And every ad is starting to do this now. We should do that for our podcast. <laughs> so it's like, so it's like, join HelloFresh because you'll get fresh food. And you hear somebody chopping and it's like, but then you can also get fried stuff. And then you hear like, like frying sounds. And they, they do it for every ad. Oh and God. It, it kills me. I hate it so much. <laughs> you don't like they the pick ASMR? the cheesiest sounds. No, they pick the cheesiest sounds for it. Like, I hate the guy that gets the job. Yes! <laughs> Man, I would love to be that voice actor, though. Oh, yeah, that'd be fun, but... That'd be a fun little job. And then, so, it's been the holidays, and I guess Honda has this thing called the Helpful Honda Persons. Okay. And it's where they'll, like, give back to the community, and they, like, call people up and go, like, oh, we're gonna buy presents for your kids and stuff, right? Okay. Sounds wholesome. Yeah. So there's this one, and, like... The lady calls and goes, hi, like, we heard that you guys are having a hard time. He's like, yeah, me and my wife lost our jobs due to COVID, and we haven't been able to find any work, but we want our kids to have a good holiday because we have five kids. Jesus. And, like, we just don't know what to do. And then she goes, well, we here at Honda are going to buy all of your kids' presents this year, right? And you're like, aw, that's sweet. And then there's another one, too, but the ad ends with... This guy is a real person and was paid to be on the radio. <laughs> okay. So, like, was he... Like, not a real recipient. It yeah, says, so he's just a real person. It says he's a real person and paid to be on the radio. This guy is not an alien and we did compensate him for his time. So, like, he could still be an actor because you didn't lie. Yeah. Like, he is a real person. I, I think it's the most vague like disclaimer on an ad ever that is super vague and also honda did not murder your family he is a real person and was paid to be on the radio and it's like i realize that (laughs) and then and then they do it for this lady that gets something they go she's a real person and paid to be on the radio what do you mean (laughs) i don't understand what you mean it's not three raccoons in a trench coat are we sure (laughs) did you check because they could be, and then you just paid them in trash. We don't know. We don't know. That ad bothers me, too, because it's like, your wording could be better to tell me what you're trying to tell me. Yes. I know that you're trying to imply, like, oh, he's not an actor. This is not a dramatization. Just say that. <laughs> it's a it's a real person that we helped out, right? This is a real person. He has blood. He has skin. We this promise. This is a real recipient of a helpful Honda person's whatever or something, you know? Okay. But no. He is a real person paid to be on the radio. It drives me bananas every time I hear it. I can't stand it. That's a little bit bonkers. Radio ads are the worst. They're not good. No, they're not. Radio ads are bad. They're all bad. (laughs) Except for this one. For us to go to the ad zone. (laughs) (laughs) Just kidding. That would be awful. One day we'll have ads, and that's how we're going to lead into it. (laughs) Ads are terrible. We fucking hate them. Now here is from (laughs) HelloFresh. Chop, 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 sizzle, sizzle. So, yeah, I just, I heard that one again today, and I was like, I have to tell Kelsey before I never hear this again, and this gets lost to time. Okay. And then 
one good ad? No, there's no good ads. Oh. I mean, there's one that's like, okay, there's like a company around here that fixes furnaces. Okay. Like, I guess they're a local place. And I think it's all like the family members that do the ads together. Call furnace fixer in a flash. The like daughter of the family or whatever she she has like voice acting chops like for real like (laughs) all the scenarios they're in you believe she's in that scenario and then everybody else is like oh no we are crashing (laughs) and she's She's like whoa like they all read it so like they're reading it and she's selling it and she's selling it and it cracks me up because it's like She's so different than what you guys are doing. (laughs) They're so funny. No more radio, because I will be starting my new job by the time this this episode comes out. I will be there on my first day, so... I'm so excited for you. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. Back into corporate America, where we all go to die. Yeah. I mean, the podcast started in that atmosphere. It'll thrive in that atmosphere. Yeah. I think so too. I feel like um, the soul crushingness of <laughs> of the cubicle uh, brings out the best in our creativity. I mean, it kind of did because we would talk about how this was the one outlet to like be free of that. You know? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. I just I just can't wait to be done waking up to go pick up poop from unappreciative people and unappreciative dogs. You think the dogs like what? know what you're doing? Uh, some of them, yes, because they get very upset. They come up and they're like, hey, that's mine. I made that. That's hey, my please snack. Please no. Please I was, no. I was saving that for later. Put it down. Uh, there is one. Like, some of some of the dogs are just, like, intrigued by the bucket. And they always <laughs> want to, like, sniff in it. And I'm like, dude, you don't want to put your nose in here. I won't so allow it. Do you have, like, several dogs worth of poop in your bucket when you enter a dog yard? No, there's only the poop for that yard. Okay, because I feel like if you have, like, other dogs poop, the dog would be like, excuse me. Because <laughs> you know no, no, dogs no. be sniffing everything. No, no. You scoop it, you empty it, and then you go to the next place. Do you have, like, a big bucket of poop in your backyard? Like, not in your backyard, in the, back, in the backyard. <laughs> you just take it all home. Yeah, it's, it, just, it just goes home. It's free manure. <laughs> it's free poop. Who wouldn't want it? And then um, I'm like, manure, manure, yeah. <laughs> well, how do you get rid of it? Like, is it just in the back of your van? Like, in a big 55-gallon drum with a big X on it? So, so you have, like, uh, like a big storage bin. So, like, if you go to Walmart and get, like, a storage bin, you know, to put, like, stuff like, to go out in the garage, you know? Okay, yeah. So, it's just, like, one of those. Just and then a big you put, box. You put, like... A big contractor trash bag in there. Okay. And you empty the bucket in there all day until it gets too heavy. Then you bag it up, take it out, put a new one in, and then you just throw those in the trash can. And then, like, your headquarters, is it just, like, a bigger bucket of poop? Well, there's a dumpster. So, Ah. yes. Yes, just a big dumpster-sized bucket of poop. And then that big dumpster goes to the dump, and it's just a dump full of dump. Yeah. I'm just, like, thinking about the pathways that poop takes now. Because, like, humans, you know, we just flush it. But like, Yeah, but it goes into the sewer, and then it goes somewhere, you know? Do they take the dog poop to the sewer? No. It just goes straight to the dump, right? No, yeah. That just gets thrown away. Which is kind of a whole thing for me, because the reason why you're supposed to pick up poop is because it can filter through the ground and get into the water supply. Yeah. But now you're putting all of it in one place. Yeah. So the water over there has got to be real rank. Yeah. Because that, like that was the first thing I asked whenever I got there. I was like, how do you dispose of it? Because I was like, is there some like, do you, burn you it? know, breaking bad type thing where like you put it in this vat of stuff <laughs> and it just like dissolves away, you know? Yeah. That's and exactly like, what I was thinking. Yeah. And he goes, no, you just throw it away. I was like, what? You just that's boring. Throw away the poop. Like, why? Why did they hire me if I don't have chemicals? Yeah. Like, I don't know. I thought there would be some kind of grand, like, some pomp and circumstance, some poop and circumstance. <laughs> so that was a little bit of a letdown to find that out. Okay. But yeah, it just like rides in the back all day. God, does your van smell? Yeah, I mean, kind of. Not once Sorry, you close I the have bag. all these like poop questions today. I've never really thought about it before. Like, 
what it is you do, you know? But, like, now I'm thinking about the logistics of the poop. Okay. So, all right. You get in the truck, right? Uh-huh. You get in the you truck. listen so, okay. to the radio. So, by the way, I wanted to preface this, I guess, with what I was going to say earlier. I listened to the show from the week that I was gone. Sorry that I was gone, guys, but the moving people made things awful. Yeah. Kelsey is the best co-host of all time to be able to literally... Pe- I mean, within minutes, she had pieced together like <laughs> what the next one was going to be. It was pretty amazing. It really fell into place kind of perfectly because Robbie had been talking about like... We kind of joked the other day. I was like, you should be a guest on our show. And he was like, ha ha, I would just talk about transportation. That would be so boring. <laughs> and I was like, no, that'd be cool. And then like the opportunity arose and I was like, hey, remember how you joked about being on the show? Can you do that in like five minutes? <laughs> Oh, man. Taylor he was, was like, riveted sure? the whole show. Good. I'm glad. We've had some positive feedbacks. I was yeah. I was super... I wasn't worried. I was just like, this is a different episode tonally than people are used to, so I hope the listeners enjoy it, you know? Well, here's here was my thought about it, okay? Okay. We're not necessarily comedy. We're not necessarily any one thing. We're like a human podcast. Yeah, like we're in the comedy category on iTunes because we had to put us somewhere. Yeah. And we think we're funny, but like we've never had a guest on the show that's like promoting their agenda. It's just promoting an aspect of their humanity to other people to experience, you know? So yeah. I just thought it was cool to hear I mean just here's here's just somebody's human story, you yeah. know? I'm I'm a teacher doing all this stuff and here's the stuff that I do. You might find it boring, but I love it, you know? <laughs> I mean, I was entranced by it. I thought it was so cool, too. I'm glad. I mean, Thank it's, you. It's just like a different slice of life, you know? Yeah. So that's what I wanted to tell you, because now I'm about to tell you the poop slice of life. <laughs> okay, give me the poop slice. Okay. Carve into that pie. So you get in the truck, you turn on the radio, because you got to have the tunes, right. right? You get bored. And then we get we get like an app on the phone, and it tells you where to go. So, like, hit the map, you go, right? So it's like Poop Uber. It's called something really weird. It's like <laughs> almost like name. ALF. <laughs> it's just the concept of Poop Uber. <laughs> it kind of made me laugh Poop for Uber. some reason. Poop Uber. It's, a, it's this website that tells you the cleanest toilet in your vicinity. <laughs> oh, my God. You go to the house. You literally just, like, pull up to the front of somebody's house. And hopefully they've unlocked their gates like they're supposed to, you know. Uh Uh-huh. And you just barge into people's backyard and scoop poop. Like, here I am, my poop bucket. You ever go to the wrong house? I actually did that today. Oh, my God. (laughs) What happened? Well, so uh, I had heard before, like, sometimes somebody will go into the wrong yard and then the homeowner will come out and be like, I don't pay for your service, but thanks for doing that. (laughs) You know, Um, I mean, nothing happens. You just go, oh, sorry. And then you leave. But, like, I was trying to get into this yard, and I was like, why won't this gate open? And I was like, it is locked. What the heck is going on? And I was like, well, these aren't even the cars that are normally in this driveway. (laughs) I was like, maybe this is the wrong house. So I walked out front, and I was one house away. I was like, shit. So I just walked to the next one, walked right in. I mean, I've gotten a lot of weird looks before. Okay, so at this one, this kid was peeking at me through the window. Through the window? So, like, the back door has, like, this window, and he, like, opened the blinds all slow. Like, lifted the blinds, didn't, like, turn them, right? Okay. He, like, raises the blinds, and he just, like, is looking at me. Okay. (laughs) But he was just staring at me, and I, like, waved, and was like, hey. And he just kept staring, and I, like, scooped a little bit, and I turned around, and he was still there, and I just go, like, hand up, hey. And then he just disappeared at some point i don't know what happened but he was just staring at me and it was really weird this is an adult person no it was like a 13 year old kid or something (laughs) i mean old enough well yeah but he's just like staring like unblinking not mad not like angry just like staring just gawking just just like blank stared and it's like you've seen me here before what do you want (laughs) what do you need how can I you help you today? You go to the go to the place, walk in wherever they tell you to walk in, and you just comb the backyard for poop. And you, you scoop, scoop it, it poop. in with a little thing, it goes in the bucket, and then you go back to the truck, you upside down it into the bigger bucket, 
throw it in the back of the truck, hop in and go to the next one. I mean, it's a very, like, monotonous, tedi- tedious thing, you know? Yeah. And you never go to... I, I'm, I'm going to say it as a normal person's house. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I only go to, like rich people's houses oh of course because nobody like like, in phenomenally rich people nobody in our income bracket is paying anybody to pick up poop yeah like there was this one uh i so i got there and there were six cars parked outside already and then i'm making the rounds and there's this garage with like 20 more in there what the fuck is it like a mansion kind of yeah (sighs) dude that that place has this really awesome pool out back is that and in the shape have... of Texas? No, it's not. Ugh, that'd be the coolest pool. But they have this, like, patio back there, and there's a TV and just, like, a hanging bed. What? Outside on the patio. Like, four ropes holding a bed where they can just watch TV and, like, swing outside. What In the... a full bed. That's what? the ultimate hammock. That's the ultimate rich that... hammock. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't even know what to think about that. Yeah, that place is phenomenal. Now, that's in Dallas. Okay. Dallas is like, what, old money? Because Dallas is pretty know. ritzy. Dallas is, there's like, there's a significant line in Dallas where like, if you're one direction of it, it's just beat down to shit. And if you're that's the other true. side of it, it's like the richest white people in so, Texas. I have to go there tomorrow, actually. Yeah. But, uh, there's one house I do, because, like, you do this house, it's pretty standard. It's normal. I go five minutes down the road, and it's in, like, an area where everybody has, like, gates in front of their front door. Yeah. And, like, bars on all the windows, right? Of course. Why not? Like, that's, like, a bad part of town. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That you've got to, like, lock up. The front door to be locked. Looking like a bodega. And then I drive 10 minutes from there and I'm basically in uptown where people are just walking around on their cell phones, not looking where cars are going. And there's like brunch spots everywhere. And it's the nicest place ever. There's like a significant line of gentrification in Dallas. I swear. Like you, you cross over it and suddenly like flowers bloom and you're like, why is this happening? I know. It's weird. I mean, that's pretty much all you do. You just walk in, you scoop, you leave. You put the poop in the bucket, you put the poop in the bigger bucket, and then in the bigger bucket, and then it goes to the biggest bucket. Yeah, I was a little sad that there wasn't, like, some kind of special, like, conveyor belt system back at the office where you dumped it, and it, like, went through this process <laughs> of just dissolving it into, the, into like, nothing, you just know? It's a big, like, conveyor belt. <laughs> it goes into, like, a big vat of soup. I was picturing, um... Luigi's Mansion, when they're turning, goes into, from their spectral form to, like, the paintings. Oh, my God. And it goes through this whole process, and then, like, you get this crazy finished product. <laughs> I was like, do we, like, put it down, and then it turns into, like, recycled straws? I don't know. Okay. Man, no reaction from that. I must have killed you with that one. <laughs> I just, your, the way your brain works. <laughs> Yeah, no, I was listening to the show with Robbie, and I was like, man, we're on, like, different levels. <laughs> he's a smart dude. He's, like, a teacher guy, so he's got to yeah. be, like, all about wanting to educate. And I'm like, I just want to make the world ridiculous. <laughs> he's very close to his doctorate. Yeah. Yeah. That's I mean, super just, cool. It is super cool. But, uh, so, yeah, that's all there is. And then sometimes there's dogs outside. Sometimes you get to pet a dog, and that's a sometimes good day. Sometimes they're dope. Yes. Yeah, sometimes. Well, so, like, I've cried a few times at Aww. the homes that I, like, won't be going back to. Aw. Because, like, the dogs are super nice, and they, like, love me so much. Little besties. Uh, so there's one. This dog's name is Harley. Cute. Uh, just like a retriever of sorts. I don't know what to call these white ones. They're, like, golden retrievers, but they're white. Like Great Pyrenees? No, because he's a Great Pyrenees. But this is, like, a golden retriever that's white. And they just call them, like, retrievers. Golden (laughs) retriever white. Wow. White golden retrievers. That's a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 
That's him. Yeah, so yeah. he's so he's just a white one, right? That dog is fucking so cool. He's so friendly. He's so nice. Uh, every time I leave, though, he, he like, stands at the gate and then, like, howls when I leave. Aw. And so I was glad that the last time I went, he kind of, like, didn't stand at the gate this time. So I was like, if you howl at me, I'm going to fucking die. <laughs> and then there's another dog that I had to go to today. He got lucky, too, because his dachshund brother was trying to bite me. So I oh kind of wasn't in, like, the touchy-feely mood. Yeah. But that dog is still like a puppy. And when I first met that dog, it was like three months ago, had just been spayed. Oh. Or neutered. Because I still don't know if it's a boy or a girl because I've never well, seen him go to the bathroom. Got the snip. But uh, he like that dog was loopy and in a cone. Oh, no. Because like, they just came back from the vet, right? Yeah. And the lady was like, oh, yeah, we just got back from the vet. And he like kind of walked up to me and just like, Looked at me and like fell at me. <laughs> so I was like petting him and telling, the, telling him that he was cool. And so the next time I went to the house, there was one with like a shaved leg. So I was like, oh, you must be the one that went to the vet. Glad you're feeling better, little dog. Yeah. And he's like my best friend. Aw. Uh. I love that dog so much. And we play every time I go out there and I'll never be at that house again today. <laughs> oh, it's so sad. Like, like it's gone now. So there's a couple more that it's like. I'm going to miss this house and miss this dog. Yeah. Because, like, you form a relationship with a dog when you go there, you know, two times a week for three months. Right. But well, so. Say goodbye to furry friends. It'll it'll be fine. I'm just going to, like, try to remember where they live and just be like, I used to scoop your poop. Can I be <laughs> your dog's friend? Just, like, stand outside the gate with a treat. Oh, man. So there's one I'm going to see tomorrow. Uh, it's a It's a border collie. Mm-hmm. Those are so pretty. I fucking love that dog, dude. That dog is so cool. He's so smart. He's the smartest dog <laughs> ever. And he's always so happy to see me. And he has, like, the coolest little, like, obstacle course set up in the backyard. Oh, he's one of those dogs. Yeah, so, like, he can, like, run through this area and then be, like, above the fence so he can, like, look at it who's coming, but oh it's blocked God. off. So, like, he has, like, a little, like, uh, like a crow's nest to be able to see who's coming into his yard. Hell yeah. And then he, like, makes his way back down, and then he's there to, like, hang out with you. And he is so cool. I went there one week, and he gets walked by, like, one of the neighbors, because the person that owns him is pretty old. Yeah. So one of the neighbors walks that dog while I was pulling in while that person was walking him. And they were about halfway down the street. Oh, so you're like shouting after the dog, like, wait, wait. Well, no. So like they they were coming back to the house. Okay. I pull into the house and I'm like getting all my stuff ready to go in there. And finally they kind of like come into view and he is pulling on that lady (laughs) trying to get to me. He's here. He's like, it's my dude. (laughs) And like, finally she just lets go and and she goes, I guess he, he knows who you are and saw you because he's been pulling for a while and it, and it sucked. (laughs) Oh, he ran up to me and was so cool. I'm going to miss that dog for sure. So sweet. But it's just a good, like, experience, I guess. It's a different experience yeah, than I've ever had. Different thing to do. Yeah. I wouldn't recommend doing it for a long time because you get the trigger finger. Yeah, you get the, the bad hands. Yeah. I'm hoping those heal up pretty soon. Me too. Actually, they're not as bad. Like, I guess something's working that I'm doing. Well, that's good. I won't be back at the old way, so I'll just have boring numbers and stuff to talk to you guys about again. Which means the podcast is going to get even funnier. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got a listener email. Shall I read Ooh, it for you? Ooh, yes, please. This is from we her. We haven't gotten one in a billion years. I know. Somebody so somebody sent in a Rose Rose Thorn Bud for us, oh, which I'm okay. super excited to read. Okay. All right. This one is from Jose treasured listener and patron okay jose oh by the way maybe this isn't for podcast material but jose got like kicked out of the zeitgeist did he tell you that Mm -hmm. so i I was able to put him back in but like it was just weird like oh patreon that happened again yeah he did talk about that it happened again oh what what shut up what 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 so 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 Kelsey, 
Right, right. <laughs> when everybody left Animal Crossing, yeah, there were people that didn't sign out of the lobby, right? So like the little voice chat thing. Yeah. So I like right click them. And I was like, oh, yeah, I want to, like, get him out of the little voice chat thing, right? So I was like, uh, yeah, kick person. Oh, no. So so I hit kick person on Taylor, and then I don't know what made me think about it, but I realized she wasn't getting the stuff on her phone from, like, the, like, chat and stuff. <laughs> and so I looked at it and was all like, wait a minute, because I did that to Jose, too. Oh, no. So I went and checked Taylor's phone, and, like, she wasn't able to get into that thing anymore. So I invited both of them back, and then they were back, and things were fine. Yeah. It was like a like a 10-minute window there. <laughs> but I uh, found out that you just hit disconnect, and they get off the yes. the voice thing. But I was like, yeah, get the fuck out of here. Kick, Kick you out. right off the server. Fuck you, patrons. <laughs> but yeah, he said something. Of, well, well, he said the Patreon bot kicked him out. Like, it yeah. personally said, like, get out of here. You didn't pay right or something. That's what he sent to me. So he was like... Uh, it tried to charge the wrong card or something. And so it, yeah, the Patreon account charged his empty PayPal instead of his actual card. And he got kicked yeah. out of the zeitgeist. Yeah. So that's different than the one that I did, but I, Oh my God. I kicked him and Taylor out the other day and then put them right back in immediately. Well, so. Good job. <laughs> yeah. I was like, Oh my God, I fucked it up. Kelsey's going to hate me. I wonder if that's why the bot didn't fix him. But, like, I guess the bot must have demoted him to non-Zeitgeist at some point, so... I mean, yeah. I'm guessing that's just because of the card thing, because when I invited the people back in, Taylor was able to do all the same stuff again. Okay, yeah, and I <laughs> and, and when I invited him in, it didn't put him in the Zeitgeist, but I did. Okay. So, I mean, I fixed it. Okay. And Taylor hadn't had a problem, so Jose's problem is not my fault. All right. Well, I got him fixed. Yeah, it was okay. just an issue with his card, but he's back yeah. now. Okay. Um. Anyway, so, so this email is from our dear friend and patron Jose. So it does say Rose, Rose, Thorn, Bud, and I'm going to read it for you all. Okay. He says, "I kept putting this off, but I finally sat down and I did it. Procrastination is a curse. I agree." <laughs> Uh, his first rose reconnecting with video games. I was able hmm. to experience games again that I only ever played as a child with the help of my mom. I also got to play games I was never allowed to or never got the chance to. It made me appreciate the art form so much more and helped me understand a lot about it. Oh yeah, because uh, Nintendo put Donkey Kong Country on there, and he was freaking out about how much he played that as a kid, and yeah. he was like, "It's amazing to play it again." I loved that story. That's a good one. I love that. I really love finding games that you um like enjoyed as a child and then replaying them as an adult because the experience can range from like this is amazing and I'm so happy I found this to like why did I ever enjoy this game? Oh man. So I've actually been hearing that the, that uh, the Switch might put Game Boy games on oh. the online service soon and they're like they could put uh Pokemon Red and Blue back on there and I would still play them again. I bet that you would. <laughs> I would. And you should. Well, maybe. You should do yellow. <clears throat> okay, Jose's second rose. He says, this year gave me the time to sit and think about really heavy shit, but I feel like I was able to learn to cope and process a lot of past traumas and got to emotionally let go of things, which I think is good. very beautiful. That is good. I think that's been what a lot of us are doing after and during 2020. Like, it was, it was, it was a time, guys. I think the whole world was going through it, and... Being able to process and learn and cope, that's um, that's a treasure that we can all take yeah. out of 2020 together, I think. All right, I'm not um, looking forward to this one. His thorn is gestures vaguely at the world, which is okay. just perfect. Good. Okay. Um, and he says, also not being able to go to thrift stores to look for toys or cool oh. housewares, which I fucking miss thrift stores. I was thinking about them again today because, like, I was outside um, with the workbench just kind of fixing it up. And it's... Yeah. It's a really cool workbench because it was, I believe it was either my dad's or my granddad's. I'm not super sure. It might have been my dad's because I think he had the more room for it. But um, there's just like, we, we sanded it down because the top was really moldy and just like mm -hmm. old. But under like the surface of grime, there's just like little like nail marks and hammer marks. Just kind mm -hmm. of the wearing of being used. And it looks... It's really yeah. nice. You know, it's just you can tell other people have used this and made use of it. 
made me think of thrift stores. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I miss thrift stores. I've never found anything of worth in a thrift store for me. Ugh. I found the coolest thing I've ever found in a thrift store when I'm not playing Cursed, Haunted, or Murder Weapon is um, a series of cookie jars and kitchen paraphernalia that are all like mushroom themed. Okay. There was like this popular 1970s mushroom thing. Let me look up the name of it because I think it's called just like Magic Mushroom. 1970s Mushroom <laughs> Kitchen Set. It was from Sears. It's called the Merry Mushroom Set. Okay. It's very mushroomy. Like it's it's like if you think about the 70s and mushrooms, this is what you think of in your mind. This is the image generated. It's just so like Okay. cottage core and my granny always had like the biggest one as a cookie jar growing up so i like mm-hmm. i just have really fond memories of like going and getting a cookie from this jar and i found yeah. the entire kitchen set at a thrift store and oh, i was like wow. i will take this please <laughs> so i have it i don't use it as my kitchen set i just like keep it on a shelf have it. yeah but yeah that i treasure that shit i miss thrift That's stores awesome. i can't wait to go back i mean so, would would like an antique shop be considered a thrift store? I think so. Yeah. Okay, because I do like to go to antique shops. You find some wild stuff there sometimes. Yeah, like that. Like to me, when I'm thinking thrift store, I'm finding like the old clothes, like Goodwill and stuff. Yeah, kind of that is more what I'm thinking of. Okay, yeah. When I think thrift store, I think of like the the uh, the Denton downtown malls. You ever been there? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. There's one thing that I keep finding it. This one thrift store that I've been to that I would like to get the rest of. I have a uh, Garfield mug that came from McDonald's. Yes. Do you remember when McDonald's put out, like, glassware? Yes. For, like, specialty things? Uh Uh-huh. Well, we've had this Garfield one, and Garfield's one of my favorite comic strips of all time. I love Garfield so much. Right. I have this Garfield mug that I've used for my coffee since I was, like, five (laughs) <laughs> you drinking like, your hot black coffee at five years old sometimes what yeah okay sometimes i would get like a little bit of coffee when i was a kid <laughs> um like even when i go to my parents now that's the one i pick and it is a very small cup <laughs> like is it, it is like so the, small the glass one that has like a comic strip on it yes yes there's like six different ones of those wow i know and i I've seen them at this one antique store that I've been to with Taylor and they had like four different full sets of them. Oh my God. And I was like, I should just get these, but I didn't get them. They're so cool. So vintage. I would, I, I, I would love to get the rest of them. Yeah. But if you're looking at them now, the one that I have, it's uh, Garfield in a hammock. <laughs> and he goes, it's not a pretty life, but someone has to live it. And then oh when you God. turn it around, there's Odie holding the other side of the hammock in his mouth with like a <laughs> fan trying to like fan him. Okay. I have used that thing my entire life. That's kind of awesome. Anyway, Josue. Josue. Okay. So his bud, he says, I'm looking forward to continuing to grow the little virtual pet shop that I run with my mom and my nieces. It's been a really cute way to keep us all constantly connected, even though we're 1300 miles away. That's cute. I love that. Super sweet. And I love that a lot. So what is his little like pet thing? I don't know. So I know that his mom makes like, um, Tamagotchi stuff, like paraphernalia, like little pillows that you can seat your Tamagotchi pets into. That's so cool. I know. I I love that people have found like new ways to stay connected with family during this time. It's been so yeah. shitty. And I just can't wait to see my family in person again, but the the virtual stuff has been nice to see. Yeah. Well, that was a fantastic rose rose thorn bud. I yes. loved it. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for sending this in and please keep them coming guys. If you have just rose rose thorn buds that happen to you, like if you have a particularly eventful day that some shit happens to you and you have a rose rose thorn bud for that day alone, send it in. We're curious. Yeah. Send it in for any time frame. This is an ongoing Yimto project. We want to share the human experience with everybody else. Yes. That's what this podcast is about. Yeah. Not everyone's going to have the same experience that you are. And it's interesting to hear about that stuff from time to time. Well, would you like to uh, clip these thorns? Let's scoop this poop. Scoop this poop. Let's put this poop poop. in a bucket and then into another bucket and then into another bucket. 
And then into the ground. And then into the water supply. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, please tell your friends about us. Help us grow this audience. We love that we've started with such a small group. It's growing ever slowly, but we're just gaining more and more people. And we love meeting all you new listeners, being able to share the human experience with you guys. Uh, if you like what we're doing, don't forget to subscribe to us on your favorite platform so you never miss an episode because we release weekly every Monday, even when one of us is moving and has the worst <laughs> time of his life. We still make it happen. It will happen. That's the Yimtope guarantee. That's our sticker. That's our that's our Nintendo quality sticker. Ours is every Monday. <laughs> yes. Like, that happens. Uh, and if you like the fact that we're always here for you Monday, you like the stuff that we do. Go out to Apple Podcasts, give us a big old five stars that would help us reach even more people and build up an even bigger, beautiful audience. While you're out there giving us five beautiful stars, you can find us and friend us on social media. We are at YMBTOAP on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. And we are now also on Patreon. If you like what we do and you want to keep us doing it, please consider supporting us there. Uh, you can support us for as little as $2 a month and you get access to our beautiful Discord community where we talk about what we ate for dinner, uh, whether we are burning the house down. I don't know. What, what's some cool stuff we've been talking about lately? Uh, let's see. I was talking about Ninja Turtles the other day. Oh, we were talking uh, about the Cats movie and what a train wreck it is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've been talking about now the whole, like, descriptive audio thing. Yes, I have never done descriptive audio, but, like, after watching that on the Cats stream, or not stream, after watching... I didn't know that they did that for movies. I didn't either. That's like, very cool. I guess, I mean, if you're a blind person who wants to watch a movie, that's the way to do it. Yeah, like, I know that your computer does it. Like, you can turn on a setting where, like, when you put your mouse over something, it says what it is. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the PlayStation does it, too. And it'll be like, you press the home button, and it's like, you are on the fucking homepage! And it just, like, screams at you, and it's like, <laughs> this is this game now! And it's like, okay, I don't want this! Oh, my God. Like, it screams everything at you. I've just never heard of that happening for a movie. Yeah, me either, but I'm fascinated now. This is my new favorite thing. Like, it's, okay. So it's kind of like, you know, like, the translators yeah. for, like... You know, and they're like at like a rap concert. Yes. And they're like, and they're fucking trying to keep up. Throwing signs and shit. Yes. It looks so cool. I want that. I want descriptive audio for like an intense action scene. Oh, man. Where I just really like, am and, curious and, now. And then, and then the car is jumping. They're moving. They're flying. They're just twisting this way. Oh, my God. They're all screaming. Oh, there's bullets flying everywhere. And they're just and like, the fruit just stand and cabbages go everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I want that. I kind of want to watch cats that way. <laughs> So if you want to pay us $2 a month, you can get access to all that madness in our Discord. And if you want to upgrade to the $5 a month tier, you get access to our Patreon-exclusive YouTube, where we release a new review every single month. And January is going to be Avatar The Last Airbender. Please join us for that. I'm excited about it. So so you have finished it now, right? I am waiting <laughs> because oh I God, want it to okay. be fresh in my mind. So okay. we'll have to talk well, scheduling and then I will finish it probably yeah, the, the day we record when... it. Because I want to rewatch the ending as well. Okay. Okay. So if you guys uh, want to send us an email, you can do so at ymbtoap at gmail.com. We want that listener mail. Send us your rose, rose, thorn, buds. Send us your happiness moments. Send us whatever you want us to talk about on our next Patreon review. Do you want us to review a movie, a TV show, a game? Do you want us to stream something? Do you want us to, what do you want to do? What do you want from us to you, our patrons? We love you so much. And don't forget... Our theme song is The Grimmy Purple Is The Horn by Farage. Please check him out on YouTube. Don't give us all the love. Spread the love to somebody else that needs it too. His music deserves so much love. It's some of the most amazing stuff I've ever heard. Truly. And as always, thanks for listening and tune in next time to get the answer to that burning question. Is Kelsey even going to remember what's happening in Avatar for when she watches the ending? Gonna have to watch a recap. one more important sound we wanted you to hear and some people are like i am in my living room but i built a fort out of couch cushions and they just record from inside their little like podcast fort yes this is the precious podcast <laughs> all stooped over in their little fort that's how i imagine you recording i mean that is pretty much how i record i just like lean over 
I just like get like mic. yeah I, I just get like a big like hunch back there and then I just go yes hello welcome <laughs> welcome to the show